and restore, I pray you, to them even this day, their land they took away from them, their vineyards, they overcharged them in everything. They took olive yards away, their houses, also the hundredth part of the money, the corn, the wine, the oil that you exacted them. They, and they said, they said, everything we've gypped the people, the priests said this, everything we've gypped the people on, we will restore and will require nothing of them. So will we do as thou sayest. Then I called the priests and took an oath of them that they should do according to this what? Also, I shook my lap. <laughs> I shook my lap. You know, to shake the lap is a raiment worn around the neck for the purpose of carrying grain in and supplies. It's like an apron. It's built much like an apron that you ladies used to tie around your neck. But it's, it's wider around here, and it hangs down in the front, just like, like, like a carpenter's nail apron a lot. It'll hang down here. And then you put, it'll hold about 10 pounds of wheat, and they would wear that when they would go to market and get it filled. And the reason it says, shake the lap, having this on, this apron-like, and being filled, they could sit down, they'd shake it like this. Now, the shaking of the lap means, he said he shook his lap, they would take it. And because of the shaking, the shaking means they'd empty it. They'd throw all the grain out. It'd all go on the ground. And so God said, if, if you don't do this, I shake my lap. I'll, the, he said this to the priest, I'll shake the lap, meaning I'll spill all of the good stuff on the ground. There won't be anything left for you. You'll all be beat on this thing. All right? Sure. Bless your heart. Tremendous. Now back to Acts and see what this thing's all about. And when they opposed themselves, you see, they opposed themselves. They had promised God that when they were Jews and in the synagogue, that they would be obedient to the law and to the word of God that was read in the synagogue, right? Like in the church, they promised to be obedient to the word of God. They opposed themselves because they were not obedient to the word. And they blasphemed the word of God. They were blaspheming the word of God. So he shook his lap, shook his raiment, shook his lap, indicating that all the goodies were spilled out on the ground. God's favor was no longer upon them. All of God's blessing was gone from them. They had broken all of God's promises. That's the meaning of that tremendous Orientalism, and he shook the raiment, or he shook the lap. Anything further to add there, Bishop? Wonderful. Good. Now, and he said unto them, you see, here is this shaking of the lap. Your blood be upon your own what? I am clean. Why was Paul clean? Because he, he as a Jew, had gone to the synagogue first. He'd preached the word in the church, so to speak. He'd given them both barrels, given them all of his knowledge of God's word, but they refused it, right? So he shook his lap, spilled it all out. He said, the blood be on your own heads. I'm through. From henceforth, I'm going over to the boys down there in the salute and the old sinners the gals in the red light district, any place. I'm going down to human need where people want to hear and where they want to get the word. So he went to the Gentiles. Verse 7. And he departed thence and entered to a certain man's house named Justice, one that worshiped God whose house joined hard to the synagogue right next door. And Crispus, the chief ruler of the synagogue, believed on the Lord with all his house. And many of the Corinthians, hearing, believed, and we're baptized. It doesn't say baptized with water, and if it doesn't say water, don't you put water in it. Then spake the Lord to Paul in the night by a vision. You know what a vision is? We'll get into this in the advanced class when we operate word of knowledge, work the word of knowledge. A vision is nothing but revelation via television. Colored television not black and white. Technically, technically, it is exactly what I've said in understanding. A vision, God, by revelation, shows them a picture, and it's in color. 
usually. Why not? God's not limited. Might as well give it to you and call it. He showed him a vision. Showed him a vision. This is revelation. And he said to Paul, be not what? But speak and hold not thy what? You know why? Because, boy, when he cut himself loose of that synagogue and said, fellas, this is it. You know what the synagogue said? We'll get him. We'll get him, boy. We'll get that old fella. So we went out. And the Lord said to him, Paul, don't get excited. He said, don't you be afraid of them. You just speak. And don't you ever hold your peace. In other words, you say what you've got to say, Paul, for me. For I am what? With thee. And boy, what a tremendous thing that is. I am with thee. And no man shall set on thee to what? For I have much people in this what? Look at the revelation and the comfort that's in revelation. Listening to the Lord and getting the Spirit of God to tell you something. Look at that comfort. Boy, that's something a man needs at some time in life, and a woman needs, right? To hear from the Lord as to what to do in a situation. And he continued there a year and what? Teaching the Word of God among them. And when Gallio was the deputy of Achaia, the Jews made insurrection with one accord against Paul and brought him to judgment seat, saying, This fellow persuadeth men to worship God contrary to what? <laughs> That's something. And when Paul was now about to open his mouth, Gallio said unto the Jews, If it were a matter of wrong or wicked lawlessness, O ye Jews, reason would that I should bear with you. But if it's a question of words <laughs> and names and of your law, look ye to it. For I'll be no judge of such matters. Wasn't that nice of him? Sure. Here the Jews were bringing him, and he had no right to it. The, the, the old deputy said, eh, if it was a matter of, of, you know, murder or anything else, my field. Well, if it's a matter of your blooming law, and your system, see, that's right. It was, <laughs> yeah. He said, you take care of them. And verse 16 says he drove them from the judgment seat. He said, get out of here. Then all the Greeks took Sosthenes. You see, they couldn't get Paul. Then they took Sosthenes, the chief ruler of the synagogue, and beat him before the judgment seat. And Gallio carried, cared for none of these things. He didn't have anything to do with their religious fight. He was a smart politician. He played them all the way around, you know. And Paul, after this, tarried there yet a good while. Why? Because the word of the Lord had said, Be not afraid, speak and hold thy peace, for I am with thee, and no man shall set on thee to do what? And Paul believed God's word. God's word was God's will for Paul. So even in the midst of that, he said, I'm staying. He stayed until God told him to move. And then took his leave of brethren and sailed thence to Syria. And with him, he took Priscilla and what? And old Paul had shorn his head. He had more than a butch. For he'd made a vow. He'd made a vow. <laughs> In that time, you know, making a vow, they many times to show people they made a vow. Some of you fellows got vows. 19, and he came to Ephesus. Now he comes to Ephesus. Ephesus is the greatest seat of learning in the Near East in Bible time, Jesus' time. The great, the great library of Ephesus was the greatest library collection perhaps of all time. Over in Ephesus was the great temple to the goddess of what? Diana. One of, one of the great magnificent wonders of the world. And now to this city, Paul goes. Not by sense knowledge, but by revelation. And he takes Aquila and Priscilla along. 